Hello guys and welcome to a new wargame video today by me Vulcan and Val. Hello. Today we have another of the 3v3 Reddit tournament games on 38th Parallel today which is another new map. On the red side in this one we have Cerner Buxner with Razman, Firestarter and Dirty D. And over on the blue side we have ANZ with Cheer Up, Faust and Nandimonai. So what are your thoughts to begin with, Val? Um, this is probably the map with the biggest front line we've seen so far. And so by that what I mean is the area from Kilo to Delta is massive. Um, there's a lot of area to watch over for each of these players, so it'll be a very interesting test to them. Um, if they can play to you know like the, the usual high standard managing units all over such a wide front. Yeah, I... I'm really interested to see exactly where the focus goes on this game. Uh, I, I'm i not entirely sure we're going to see much contention in Echo, just because that bridge is incredibly hard to actually get troops over, especially if both sides occupy their side of the town. I think what we're going to see is maybe the red side moving troops across from Charlie to Bravo, and the blue side moving troops from like India to Julia. I think that's ma mainly where we're going to see troops from either side crossing the river rather than in the middle yeah i definitely agree and you have to remember as well echo is only a one point sector so capturing one of those two point sectors is worth a, a ton more than you know we're wasting a ton of resources to cross the bridge at echo yeah so what sort of decks are we looking at anyway so let's start over on the blue side so um I have faust here who has a soft codec um Nandem and I with a Soviet deck, and Cherup with a Soviet deck as well. Um, if we move over to the red team, which are deploying their units a hell of a lot faster, um, we have Razman with a Red Dragons deck with those super strong uh, TY-90 Chinese helicopters. Um, we have Firestarter who also has a Red Dragon deck, again with the TY-90s. Uh, four of them. That's, that's quite an expensive start uh, in terms of anti healers And we have um, Dirty D who is going Soviet. Yeah, so we see uh, Red 4 versus Red 4, which is uh, something that's been quite common throughout the uh, game so far. But what I'm really interested to see is the red side start. They have a lot of helicopters, or at least Dirty D does. Looks like he's going to be bringing in MIA MTVs with infantry. He's got two MI-24s and two Z9A TY-90s. Actually, no, those are Razmans, aren't they? So yeah. Dirty D's going to be utilising three anti-air helicopters, if you include the KA-52. And Razman's got two Z9A TY-90s there to support that as well. And that's if they're going to the same place. Firestarter's got his own two Z9A TY-90s and also the Z9A there with some recon infantry at the start of the game. So I think the reason that there are going to be a lot of helicopters on this map is because it is so big, and it's very important that both sides find out where the enemy is going as soon as possible. Well, it's not just that. Some of these two-point sectors across the river are actually relatively easy to hold, um, or at the very least contest if you have an infantry presence there. But once you lose control of the bridges, it can be very hard to cross. But if you cross beforehand uh, with a fast helicopter move, it can be um, very rewarding. Yeah, you sort of create yourself a beachhead, which will allow you to get more troops over once they arrive. Now, one thing that I think is pretty important in this map in particular to point out is the amount of CVs that we're going to be working with. Um, on the blue side we're seeing a spam of the russian flags from rasman <laughs> that's just beautiful rasman thanks for that um but in terms of cvs we have a k29 tb with some command infantry on the top side for nandam and i we've got the uaz from cheer up we have the t72 k1 from faust and another one from Faust as well, so T two T seventy two K ones and also a UAZ. So five command vehicles for the blue side at the start of the game. That's a lot of points. That is a lot of points. I think I do have to point out Rasman was actually he was repping his Red Dragon deck. Those were Chinese flags, but um, oh okay, yeah, my yeah. bad. <laughs> 
for the uh, the T seventy two K ones. Interesting to bring them from the start. Usually you only see them brought out kind of once you've uh, you know you've had a lot of scrapping over a sector and you realise you need something a bit heavier than UAZ. But um, yeah, off we go. Yep. On the red side, just quickly, let's have a look at these command uh, vehicles. We've got one for Firestarter. We've got Razman with one in the home sector and a KA twenty nine TB on the top side for Dirty D. So only three by the looks of things for the red side and five for the blue side. So blue side's definitely going to have like a lot more points at the beginning of the game. MiG-23 ML coming in for Firestarter. I think that's pretty much being used to look for enemy helicopters with its very good air detection. Uh, I think it is, yeah. It's a, um, a good unit to start off with. It's always a good idea if you have the points to get... Um, interceptor just to see the planes because the you know your own interceptors will give you a much greater view of enemy aircraft yeah so you can see the mig 23 ml here is uh just spotting out the ko 52 needs to be careful that it doesn't get shot down though uh mig 23 ml already onto two health and is going to be uh evac that does tell fire starter that the ko 52 is there though and that might allow him to pick that off if Faust isn't too careful, but Faust is too good to let that happen. So the KF-52 is going to be taken back to base probably to repair and rearm. So a nice move from the red team down into Bravo. They've uh, got some Lee Ren in. They're already moving troops across. Um, up on the, the top side, the blue side is doing uh, something similar really. They've pushed off and pushed across a lot of motorized units and the, the heavy armor is coming down now. So have to see exactly how this goes because that's quite a significant amount of troops and forces being moved across. Yeah, I think what both sides need to be care careful of actually is airstrikes, although we haven't seen any aircraft come in yet. But like if bombers had been used at the start of the game uh, on either of those bridges from either team, then that would have made a huge difference here. Yeah, the um, those bridges are just a complete you know, chokehold. You, you can't really avoid on this map. Oh, lovely Buratino strike on the top side from Nandibonai. Uh, hits a lot of the infantry. The Dirty D has brought in. And that's just going to get hammered by the these SU-122s, the BTI-80As and the TATUMs. A lot of that infantry is going to be going down very, very quickly. And now the BDB-90 getting involved as well. And all that infantry is just very like, ineffective at the moment with the panicked nature of the troops. We've just seen a very interesting little BRDM duel down near Foxtrot. The um, the blue team brought in a uh, BRDM and killed the enemy BRDM, but it looks like these SU-122s have something to say about that. One shot will probably kill the BRDM-3, but we'll, uh, we'll leave that skirmishing for later because this action is really heating up with uh, all that fire up over the hotel. Yeah, I, that BRDM just did a quick little run through there. It's going to get taken out by the WZs now. But uh, I don't really think that Dirty D has enough to defend against this. He's got he's fighting uh, Spetsnaz Gru and Spetsnaz in the top side with VDV, and it looks like those are going to get attacked by the Su-25 there with 120 millimeter rockets. But all his infantry has been destroyed by the, the combined forces of uh, Nandamonai and Cheer Up. So that's done a really good job so far and I'm loving the way Nanamanai is using this SU-25 utilizing the fact that there is no radar AA to be seen at the moment. Yeah it's um, very fortunate for the blue team because their, um, sorry, their tanks down in Bravo are holding off very well although it looks like they, they did have a T-90S I noticed down there but it looks like it's been taken out so that may be pushed over and captured by Razvan. Yeah, Firestarter's using this uh, Red Dragon deck to make some progress into Bravo, but they haven't stopped uh, Faust from capturing it just yet because the T-72K1 is still alive there. They don't, they don't have a command to contest it either, and they don't have one for Delta as well. So Firestarter is bringing a command up to contest Bravo, but you can see already at the start the... Conquest point actually staying relatively even, which is uh, nice to see, even though Red Side had considerably less commands at the start of the game. Yeah, it looks like they, they brought those in relatively quickly. Some nice usage if we just look up in, into a hotel of those um, rocket pods on the MI-TVs and the K-29TBs. 
uh, to really stop the infantry pushing across from the blue team into hotel, which would have been an absolute disaster if they'd have managed that. Yeah, the VDV still holding out in Juliet. They've done a great job there so far in holding back the two Spetsnaz squads, one being a Spetsnaz crew, of course. And that MI8 MTV there without any rockets, just being used to recon what's in that town by exposing them and uh, by making the infantry fire their machine guns at the helicopters. Yeah, a nice little tactic to use. A TATU from Dirty D coming up to engage the UM from uh, Cheer Up. Um, I'd say that's normally something the UM would win. We'll have to see if that is the case. Yeah, the UM obviously the upgraded TATU. So you'd expect it to win. Does it have like a much better A to GM? I think it does. Yeah, it definitely does. You got uh, 60 accuracy compared to the 50 accuracy of the TATU. Yeah, I think that is important, but also the three more AP on the gun is a big, big uh, factor of how strong it is. Well, they weren't engaging at gun range, so that wasn't a factor when they were fighting just then. But either way, those two TATUMs just doing very well to pick off all the APCs and, and force back that TATU now. SU-25 coming in for some free strikes onto the enemy, and I just love how how quickly that SU-25 can be microed because it has such a tight turning circle. It can literally just be chosen to strike anything, especially when there is no AA to stop it having its way. Yeah, a very, very nice unit, and um, if micro correctly, it's definitely one of the better units in, or the better anti, anti ground planes. Firstly, I just want to draw some attention to these VDV 90 who are still alive in Juliet somehow. I don't know uh, what exactly they're going to do there, but I'm going to hand it to them for effort. They've been fighting so long that they were almost run out of machine gun ammo. <laughs> so they did finally go down to the specimens crew once they got spotted. Uh, in Bravo now we've got the contested sector there so red side actually pl on plus one at the moment with the conquest lead. On the bottom side at Delta it looks like uh, Razman is just sort of sitting back at the moment not really bringing too much although these helicopters from Firestar are sneaking around the bottom side MI25 there supported by Z980 Y90s. Yeah, this is um, really resting on a knife edge because I think that uh, the red team definitely, Ra Razman in Bravo, does have the tanks to, to push across this field if he, you know, if he brings some, some adequate recon. Um, and also there's there's the big risk of uh, bombing strikes because there's only one place where Faust can put his CV to be honest and well it's a big risk of a smirch or a bombing strike if he's not careful. I think that in general both teams are apprehensive to force a push at this point in the game because, like you say, it is very close. But it seems that Blue Side is going to pull the trigger first. A and Z coming in with their SU-122s and the VDV push. And this is going to be very effective at pushing into this town against the Spetsnaz Gru and the VDV-90. You're probably wondering why Dirty D isn't actually pushing forward these Spetsnaz Gru and VDV-90. And it's because of the SU-122s. If he puts those on the edge of the town, it will literally get one shot by the amount of SU-122s that A and Z are using. Yeah, you have to be very careful. The, um, the last ANZ game we, we casted, they, they use this very same strategy. Um, you know, you just can't sing the praises of the SU-122 enough for uh, like an inf infantry support tank. Yeah, you just saw what happened there to the Lee Ren as soon as they showed themselves. SU-25K coming in though. But unfortunately for Razman, there is a Tunguska M sitting there in wait and the SU-25K does go down, a very expensive unit to lose. So it looks like the blue team is pushing down in um, Bravo but three bombers have come in. Uh, yeah, three J7Hs nice with the 1000 kilogram bombs. They actually didn't hit very much, those Yakuade squads are still full health. Uh, none of the SU-122s went down in the forest and neither did the tank CV. They have marked it though, so it looks like they do know where it is. I like the use of these T-72 or these uh, ZTZ-85 2As. Uh, they have a reasonable rate of fire, 7 rounds per minute, but what they're really good for is their good value for money. 
AP power with 19 AP power there and 55% accuracy. And combined with the ZTQ62G recon tank, they work really, really well. They do, but there are a lot of uh, tanks crossing, especially with that T90S as well. Uh, very, very formidable. On the top side, we've seen a few uh, help pings come down from Dirty D, so he's definitely feeling the pressure. Although it looks like they did manage to repulse this blue push into the hotel, which is very well done. What I like is uh, Firestarter's use of this ZDF-89, just on the top side of Bravo. Um, that's been uh, firing 80 gems at this T90 and forcing that back, and I think uh, that's definitely needed uh, to prevent those heavy tanks from destroying the 85-2As, because the 85-2As will struggle against the T90S. Yeah, I mean, China definitely has the best ATGM carriers in the game. ZDF-89 is just an absolutely brilliant anti-tank unit with great range and great AP. But the um, WZ-550 is even better if they decide to bring that out later on. Um, a nice push with these uh, these Yakudes into this bottom town in Bravo. Although uh, the J7H is coming in again to try and... Uh, yeah, it looks like it's try trying to pick up a CV or just do damage to those tanks. Yeah, one of them did go down though. So they are going to start losing those, especially with the Tunguska M brought in by Faust. We've got the 85-2A is actually trying to engage with the uh, Spetsnaz crew. They probably want to kill those before the uh, units in the field. And they are finally going to target those, but it did allow the Gru to actually take out one of the 2As, which is less than ideal. Over in the top side, things seem to have slowed down a little bit. Uh, what seems to have happened was Dirty D brought in his own SU-122s, and that prevented the push that was coming into Hotel. Now all things are, are pretty much even at the moment on this map, but not anymore, as the command unit in Bravo was taken out by Faust. A great move there to break the stalemate. Now uh, the, the blue team, and well, Faust is specific because he's been the one doing this attack, has made a great push over through Bravo. Uh, he's captured the bottom buildings, although the mass support coming now to, to hopefully for them clear that out. Uh, I'd like to pay attention to, to just, just below Bravo. Firestar at ZTQ62G has had a wonderful time um, just trying to support the, the forces that were in the town at Bravo. There's uh, such a good unit to have in pretty much all situations, really. Yes, yeah, a very, very nice tank. The, th the only trouble is it has been firing at Yakwa Days and Yakwa Days don't die quickly because there's 15 men in every squad. They did bring in four squads and 60 guys that that ZTQ has to kill on its own with its uh, three HE power. So that's true. <laughs> it does get it, well. It is going to take a while. Mig 27 coming in on the top side at hotel, delivering a strike there, but is going to go down to the Tunguska M. Massive push coming in. These BTR 152s supporting with their uh, twin machine guns, or are these the, the quad machine guns. I think they're just the, the dual machine gun carriers. But that Buratino, wonderful strike there, nearly actually took out the command infantry in Hotel. Definitely allowed those carriers to take out the Spetsnaz. And now the Yakionde is going to be struggling against the VDV-90. Well, you know, it's a bit of a desperate situation when your bomber kills your own infantry just to try and finish off some of the enemies. I'm not sure that was quite worthwhile. Um... The blue team, you know, they uh, they don't take no for an answer, and they've decided they wanted that they want this top town, and they're certainly not not giving up, having an absolutely relentless attack. It looks like the red sides put a lot of points into these aircraft. We saw a strike come in at both hotel and at Bravo at the same time. Three J7Hs came in with their 1,000 kilogram bombs, and uh, again missed the command in Bravo. They also brought in those two for Hotel, and the SU-27M just like completely whiffed its bombing strike more or less and killed more of their own men than enemy, so that wasn't ideal. Uh, Tungus Graham might take down a MI-28 in Hotel, so a nice kill there. But Blue Side making a lot of progress into Hotel and maintaining the plus two lead, which is 
definitely killer in uh, this situation where the reinforcements are going to take a long while to uh, get back to that town. Well, not, not just that, but even though uh, the red team is contesting both Bravo, Bravo and Delta, they've not captured either of them, whereas the blue team has completely captured Juliet. And um, by the looks of it, they'll be able to, to manage to contest the, uh, the hotel sector with their control of this town. I, I have to say, I'm slightly surprised that the, the red team hasn't brought any Yakudes of their own, because we've seen just how effective they are at at engaging in towns. Well, the good thing about the Yakudes is they're so cheap that they're very effective uh, defensive troops as well as offensive troops. And I think that's really what they could have like, used to help bulk out that defense and stop those VDV getting in the town to begin with. Because now we've got these three BTR-90s coming up to the town with the three Spetsnaz screw squads. And once those get cemented in that town, hotel is going to be incredibly hard to secure for the blue or for the red side, uh, because the command doesn't really have anywhere to hide as soon as those recon squads get in position. Yeah, I, I feel this is really looking pretty grim for the the red team, and Faust have managed to the Buratino, the uh, CV in, in Bravo again. So have to be very, very, very careful. It looks well, like uh, Firestarter's opting to use Pachongsu over Yakko days. Which is an interesting choice, for sure. I have never tested Pachongsu versus Yakko days before, so we'll see who comes out on top here, but I'm pretty sure like the overwhelming numbers of Yakko days would be able to win out on that. Now the wonderful thing about that Buratino strike actually was that it did kill off uh, one of the AA units, the HQ-7 I think it was, and almost managed to pick off the uh, command unit, MiG-23 ML going down there to the MiG-25 PD. And the J-7H there, is that going to help clear up some of those Yakwa days? I think it is, yeah, wonderful bombing strike. Yeah, it, it looks like the Pachongsu did actually you know, have a big advantage over the Yakudos, and I think that's because they have a, they have a light machine gun, whereas the Yakudos don't. Um, but when you are fighting in a town, and you you have like a full force stack of Yakudos, I think that's when they really shine, rather than this sort of open field fighting. Um, the blue team doing a good job here of managing to push back that that red side attack through Bravo. And again, I'm really surprised that that CV is you know has stayed there because. Quite a few times I think the red teams had the capital to push across, they just decided not to. Yeah, I think um, one thing that I have to focus on is Faust's use of the T-72K1s. It's definitely allowed him to secure Bravo and Delta quite convincingly. Um, the T-72K1 in Bravo especially has survived because it's an armoured CV and those bombing strikes that the red side's trying to be or tried to use. Um, have just been completely ineffective and therefore wasted points on those bombers. And also the T-72K1 in Delta means that the red side is going to have to use something a bit heavier in order to take that out. Yeah, I think this is just a very grim situation for the red team because like a few minutes ago what I would have said personally is try and push Delta because if you can take Delta you can cut round and start skirmishing all over the bottom side of the map with you know a few cheap recon here and there and that really relieves pressure on the top side because people have to start concentrating elsewhere but the blue team are just so concentrated and strong up in a hotel that if they don't if they stop sending units to hotel they'll just go straight to foxtrot you know, they won't have to stop <laughs> they'll just win the game right out so yeah i'm not entirely sure that a and z are really worried about pushing any further right now I think they're literally just going to hold on to Hotel. They haven't moved on any of the infantry that's now occupying Hotel, so yeah, it's likely they're just going to leave it there to, to rack up this this points lead with the plus two income. And Dirty D at the moment, alongside Razman now, desperately trying to bring this game back. That MiG-27 failing to kill a T-80 and going down to the OSA AK. That's a bit unlucky there from the red side. Also the J7H going down. 
Yeah, the the blue team has just really pushed through all these forces, and now, like like you mentioned before, now those recon squads have gone into the town. It's very hard to move any units over the field and try and sneak a CV anywhere because it'll get spotted almost immediately. So we do have a nice uh, sort of open push from Firestarter across Delta. He's trying to make his move to make a difference in this game. And those tankers Shashao, if they get into a decent position, will probably find the T-72K1. But even if they do, uh, all that's going to happen is this will go back to an equal uh, conquest point income again uh, but even so now we've got a plus four lead coming out of uh, the blue team where exactly is that coming from um well that's coming from they, they control both uh, Juliet and hotel whereas um the red oh team yeah they, is only... they yeah they just put a command into hotel that's where the extra plus two came from It looks like they're not satisfied with the hotel town. They need that town <laughs> in between Foxtrot and Hotel as well. Which I think I think they're going to get if they decide to uh, to actually commit. The ZTZ there basically just got killed by this T-72K1 in Delta, and uh, that's a good good job of defending itself at the moment. Uh, what, he, what Firestarter needs to do is get these tanker Shashao into the town before this Mi-24D wipes them off the face of the earth. Well, this is just so unfortunate. Look at how close they are. And then he just topped his WZ-551 as well. Uh, I believe a B-5 came over, but I am I think that, yeah, that must have bombed uh, the Bravo CV. Big crater there. Yeah. Yeah, but the T-72K1 is still alive. Uh, they're just such a good tank because they have that 11 front armor and they're just very, very good at staying alive against HE bombs. And what needs to be used is like uh, some cluster munitions, but I'm really not sure that the red side really has many of them, if any, uh, actually. Well, I, I don't think they will do. Um, perhaps a smirch. But... We'll see. Well, let's see if this uh, the bomber does go down. It is. They do know exactly where this T-72K1 is, but nope. <laughs> yeah, it's just that tank's just way too strong in order to use bombing strikes like that. And um, yeah, it was unfortunate, unfortunate that the Mi-24 did take out the tank Shashao, uh, but they also had the Su-122s there to finish the job. So I think Faust sort of reacting appropriately in the bottom side at Bravo and Delta and basically stopping Firestarter from making any progress whilst uh, Nandim and I and Cheer Up push across this top side and they're still making ground even though they don't even have to it's just making it harder and harder for the red side to pull this back and with the plus four lead this game is not going to last too much longer No, I, I think there is there's basically no way the, the red team can win this game now um, even even neutralized because those uh, the T seventy two K one commands have just they've been through so much and they've survived uh, countless bombing strikes and just an excellent job. Uh, and I, actually, I was I was not not concerned, but I was slightly confused um, because he brought them from the very start of the game, and you don't usually see that. You usually see them come out later on in the game. You know, if you've been scrapping around an area, but you know Faust. He knew what was going to happen with Bravo. He's uh, maybe he's played uh, he's played the red side before that this team before uh, on this map, but he was almost precognitive that he knew he knew exactly uh, what he would need. Yeah. So there we have it. Victory going to A and Z after 23 minutes and 43 seconds. A very convincing victory for A and Z for sure. But um, going yeah, going back to that CV point, like the T-72s at the start, uh, just such a good choice. Uh, I think it, exactly what we thought would happen happened in the fact that the red side attacked Bravo and the blue side attacked Hotel, uh, rather than there being any contention in the middle of the map. Uh, so that was the, good to see that we were correct on that. But just the fact that I think Faust prepared so much better for the uh, for that to happen whilst the uh, blue side push was just so much more effective at the start. So 
yeah, I think that's mainly what decided this game. Yeah, I think we're seeing in the past game with Cassive and they are absolute masters of this kind of town pushing with the SU 122s and the U Yukawa days, you know, with supporting elite infantry. And they just did that to perfection. Um, even when they did eventually actually peter out in that first attack, they, they still did everything perfectly, and it was only after a lot of a lot of bombing and tank support that they had to, to withdraw and then prepare to attack again. So that is, honestly, at the, at the moment, um, quite a sweeping statement, but at the moment in the way the game is, I think that's the most effective way of pushing a town. That combination of fire support and yukkudways. Because in the past I might have said um, to use smoke and charge him with infantry. But the problem with that is that if you smoke, um, then you lose the fire support that you had from those SU-122s because you can't fire directly onto the town because you've covered the town so your infantry can get there. But if you have enough cheap infantry that's only 15 points with the transports, you, know, you don't need to care about, about uh, getting taken out by an ATGM or two because you have loads of them. <laughs> so it really is just... It's it's beautiful to see when it's done correctly, and it's very difficult to defend against without, you know, a lot of your own very good infantry in your days. Yeah, I think um, also the main difference as well on this map was like between the two teams, well, the amount of kills. Like if we look at the kills, seven thousand two hundred and sixty nine kills to five thousand one hundred and seventy losses uh, for A and Z, and having two. Th- like over 2,000 more kills and losses in a 23 minute game is massive. And I think that was mainly around the top side at Hotel because on the mini map, you could see like a deficiency of units for the blue side um, or for the red side, sorry. And that really sort of basically left them caught out when the red side decided to push again. Yeah, so. Basically, just an, a brilliant performance by Anz, and we should be used to that now with the last game they, they played, where they played very well as well. Uh, not not to discount, to discount Firestarter, Rasmus and Dirty D, they both, well, they, they, they all played very well, but Anz just played better at the end of the day. Yeah, I think just in this one, NZ outplaying their opponents, but we're going to leave it there. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Bye.